Uh, our guys are excited about this game, to say the least. Uh, uh, Mike Leach does a phenomenal job um, at Washington State. Uh, and uh, offensively, you know, that's exactly what they're known for, and he's done a great job there. But defensively, um, to me, they've made big gains, um, and uh, that's made them be win eight in a row. Offensively, they're scoring a ton of points. Um, Falk, the quarterback, um, does a phenomenal job of understanding exactly what Mike wants him in. He, it looks like to me he's checking about 50% of the plays, um, and uh, so they have a very good idea of what they want to do. It gets them in the right play a lot. We're going to have to um, – play really well, that's obvious, but we're going to have to tackle in space. They spread you out horizontally, and how we tackle in space would be a big key in being able to, to slow down their offense. Uh, defensively, they, they have a good front that stunts a lot. Um, they have a lot of tackle for losses and, and uh, harass the passer. So we have to do a, our offensive lines have to do a good job of um, handling that. So it's going to be a, a great game, and uh, we're excited about um, playing Saturday afternoon. It's going to be fun. Mike has that identity as, as, as the air raid guy, as, as that, that offense, and you know, goes, goes way back. Um, when, you, when you, as a leading a defense, as you start to prepare for that and all its nuances and complexities, where do you start? Well, I got a, uh, they had a, um, the AFCA or someone sent it out the other day, and they had a picture on the front of the magazine that came out this month or of uh, Hal Mummy, the, the grandfather, the father of the uh, air raid, and then it listed all the guys that were underneath him. The first guy was Mike Leach. And they got a picture of Mike Leach and uh, Hal Mummy when they were real young. It's a pretty cool picture. And, um, you know, they, uh, you know, their philosophy and how they do it, um, they all tweak it a little bit according to each game, add a few wrinkles. Uh, but the whole key uh, is, is honestly being able to, uh, you know, um, be able to tackle the receivers in space. Tack they're one thing that they've done a better job of um, is they have three really good running backs, um, and uh, they have been able to run the ball better, which keeps you a little bit more off balance. So we're going to have to be able to, uh, you know, stop the run and tackle those guys. And uh, again, um, we're just going to have to play really well and and, and play aggressive um, at times and. Um, and hopefully we're able to make more plays than their receivers are able to make and their running backs. When you talk about stopping the run, last week you guys had some trouble against Dawkins uh, doing that. Just what did you see on film, and what do you think you can do better this week? Well, um, you know, well, this week is completely different. I mean, Falk never runs. He'll run and slide. He'll run a little bit. But he can sit in the pocket like Tom Brady and pick you apart. You know, it's kind of how he's, he seems like he has that calmness. Um, Dawkins was really fast and we knew it. He reminded me of, of he's not that guy, but he, very similar to what Kaepernick was when he was, playing at, when he was playing at Nevada and we were at San Jose State. He could just take off running and make plays. And he bounced outside on us on a couple times that hurt us. Uh, we fixed that for the beginning of the second half. We thought we had it fixed before the game, but his speed and able to bounce. Um, so did number 10. He bounced outside on us one time. Um, so we were able to, to kind of corral that a little bit. Um, they're, they're a little bit different. They'll, they will run some stretch plays, we call it. Um, and they're able to, their running backs hit it well. Um, it depends on what front we're in, what hole they're going to hit. So our guys got to know where to fit it up. Um, so hopefully we'll be stout enough against the run that we can um, kind, of, kind of eliminate that, hopefully. Oh, um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Would have bit you. <laughs> oh, OK. Um, uh, Jimmy Gilbert obviously has, has uh -huh. developed into um, one of the, the elite pass rushers in this league. Um, how much does that does that um, <coughs> bolster a defense to have that kind of consistent threat to get to the quarterback? And and what are some of the things that that have kind of helped that evolution for him? Well, it does help the defense. He's able to beat guys one on one, and you don't always have to blitz with him. Um, he was able to do that. Um, he you know he's had I think he has eight and a half sacks right now, I believe, and he missed a whole game basically. Um, which we needed him in that game. Um, and then, uh, but he's done a good job. It, it helps because they got to kind of know where he is, the, the offensive line. I'm pretty sure sometimes they, they sometimes take a back and chip him and do some different things. So it, it helps us a little bit in coverage also. Mike, after the Arizona game, you talked about your team having been good and real good, and now the challenge is to be great. Do you look into their eyes and see that they're ready to take on that challenge? Uh, yes, I do. I, I definitely do. I, I do look in their eyes. I see their their practice effort. Their, um, you know, when you're talking to them as a team, they're looking at you. They're engaged. They understand what's um, what's going on. 
um, you know, you've worked this hard. Uh, you just need to push the extra step, you know, and, uh, and, and that's not a pressure situation at all. It's just keep working, keep doing what you're doing, and, and really enjoy the moment. You know, really embrace the moment with all you've got, um, and uh, then it's not a, like an overwhelming feeling for you. So our guys are excited about it, and uh, um, they're looking forward to it. Seth uh, was up here, and he said, as an offense, they have to be ready for a shootout because Washington State scored a ton of points against mm -hmm. everybody they've played. Mm -hmm. Obviously, top-ranked offense against a top-ranked pass defense. What are your expectations out of the defense, knowing you're going against a team that completed 90% of their passes the other game, right. 74% on the season? Yeah, they, um, they you know, again, they're, they're very efficient at what they do. Mike um, does a great job of, uh, of Luke Falk understanding where to go with the ball and what he's doing. Uh, you know we're gonna have to we're gonna have to play good defense um, and uh, to be able to win the game um, and you know definitely gonna have to score some points when you're when you're playing in a in a major game like this with um, uh, high powered offenses on both sides of the ball you're gonna have to score some points but it, both defenses I think in their minds can think they can stop both def offenses um, so I think that's why that both teams are doing as well as they are I think both teams are pretty balanced football teams. Your secondary, to follow up with that, your secondary has had a lot of talk about it and they've done very well this year. Is this a game because they're going up against such a high-powered offense where you feel you almost have to give them an extra challenge? Uh, well, no, I think the challenge is just watching Washington State on film. I really do. I don't think I, I don't have to really say anything except, you know, we're, we're coaching them on certain techniques we want to play, certain things that we need to do in this game. Um, definitely coaching them on that, but there's, real, there's no motivation. They watch them on film and realize how well Falk throws it, how well they run the routes. I mean, they got the leading, the guy that broke Spruce's record um, the other day. And so, I mean, they, they understand what we're going up against. So there's no motivation or, um, uh, that type of thing, but there is the understanding of what the fundamentals we we're going to need to play against them well to be able to stop some of the things they love to do. Your offensive line, just a few words. You've had a lot of uh, injuries there, and yeah. a lot of different guys played last week. You want to just talk about the health of them and how you see them moving forward? Right. Uh, the, the good thing about this compared to last year is the guys that we're throwing in there this year have had starts and played, so you don't have as big a drop-off at all. You really kind of stay steady. And so, uh, um, you know, Jeremy was back practicing today, and um, Jared Coe's still out. Hopefully, he maybe, maybe can do some stuff tomorrow. I don't know. Um, so we've kind of got that going. When, you know, Jonathan Huckins has played a lot in there. Sully Weefels has played a lot in there. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, I feel good about the guys that we have. Mike, obviously, it kind of a, a quirky thing, but 9-1 and one in, in coin tosses this year mm -hmm. and has led to a lot of success. Yeah, right. Sorry. Why would he do that? Well, <laughs> <laughs> so, but my, my question is, as well as it's worked out, um, the philosophy of deferring and, and taking the ball has, 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 has paid dividends. Kind of, has that always been your, your philosophy in terms of kicks, or did that develop in some way? Uh, no, we, we talked about it. We kind of talk about it before every game, um, kind of what we want to do, and then sometimes it depends on the wind and different things like that. Um, but so far, that's worked out the best for us. Coach, if I could ask you about a player who won't be playing. Um, Going back to the mission game when Derek McCartney got hurt, um, to go from such a high to, to score that touchdown, you're in the lead. It looks like you're going to maybe upset the team where his father played in the, in the miracle game. If you could take us into maybe the, some one-on-one -on -one time you had with him after the game, knowing his knee was probably, he was probably out for the season. And also if you could talk to a little bit about his character as a human being because obviously – yeah, yeah, uh, an award. yeah uh, <laughs> that was a uh, wild, um, like about a three-play sequence. Uh, I don't know if everybody understands exactly what happened in that situation. Uh, you know, Cheeto made the strip. We pick it up, run it in, um, and then we come back out the next series, um, and uh, Derek gets hurt, tears his knee up, and I didn't know how bad it was, but I knew he couldn't play anymore. And then um, we uh, – score, um, Cepho goes in, he throws a pass, scores, he gets hurt, realize he's not going to play. Then we kick it off, and um, Diego Gonzalez poses um, Achilles. That was all in a four-play sequence. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And um, the crazy thing about it is all three of those guys are roommates. <laughs> and so um, I said, nobody's living in that house anymore. Uh, and uh, uh, But the, the way that uh, – you know, Derek handled it um, just like I knew he would. He's, he's a young man that has um, 
deep faith in his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Um, everybody knows Coach Max stand on that, um, and uh, he lives it every day. He has been a team captain um, for us. He is a um, he just won the uh, NCAA Good Works. Um, that only they give it to only 11 players in, in, in the United States of America. I know y'all taught, so he represents that well. Uh, he, gave, he, was, he was the blood donor, um, and so he is an, a, a shining example of a young man who lives it, walks it, breathes it. Everybody respects. He's also a very tough, hard-nosed football player. Um, he's a very good student. He, want, he wants to be a doctor. He has an opportunity to do that. He's doing really well in school. Um, and so he's just an outstanding young man. And the way he handled that, he handled it with grace. He handled it with, um, he was very down, but he's been at the training room every day. He's been at, around practice. He's been at the games. He's been supporting the young men that are playing um, exactly what you would think. And you know, the good thing is we got him back for another year next year. Um, so I've been very, um, he did exactly, he handled it exactly like I thought he would. I spoke to Akella and asked him when he'll start getting that nervous energy, that those good feelings of butterflies in his stomach, and he said probably not till he hit the field. Ryan says he doesn't get them because if he's prepared, he feels there's no reason to have Who them. said that? Moeller? Moeller, yeah. Okay. I'm wondering about yourself. When, when do you start getting those butterflies, or do you? Well, what time was the Arizona game over? <laughs> right after the um, – right when I got on the bus, kind of – ate my in and out burger and started thinking about the uh, next game. So about right then, you know, it's funny um, when young men end up coaching and they come to us and they're GAs uh, and then they can't, it, they always come into my office about, I don't know, about the middle of the second game, second week of the second game. And they go, coach, now, now I know why we said you were crazy on Tuesday and Wednesday. He said, they got to get it. They got to learn it. They don't get it. If they're not, fo I said, now we get it. You know, you wish all guys could coach and then go play. They'd be better players. It's just the way it is because they – it's our job as teachers, we have to prepare everything for them on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Really, if they don't get it by then, forget trying to do something on Thursday and Friday. And they got to play it Saturday. They get hit. There's people running at them. There's big things happening. There's people screaming. They get up. They're kind of – their elbow's hurting. They got to think straight and they got to line up and play and execute it. So we have to be able to get it all across to them early in the week on di all different types of ways that we do it. Um, and, and, and so we all look at ourselves as teachers. The, the difference in our teaching philosophy is, and it, I'm not saying everybody's this way, but our kids have to know it. And if they don't know it and screw it up, not everybody goes, well, there's, it's their fault, like a professor. Well, you should have studied better. You, you know, you study better next time. No. We're the professors. We're the ones that get in trouble. We're the ones that get yelled at. So we have to get it across to those young men so they can perform well and reach their dreams. And uh, so um, the great thing about having a more experienced team and the experienced guys passing it down to our younger guys now like we are, um, they understand that when we tell them, hey, you better play inside leverage, they don't go, oh, I got it, coach, and they go in the game and play outside leverage and they score on. These guys have had that happen. Now they know if I say play inside leverage, they play inside leverage. If you play outside leverage, if the guys line up on the numbers, you got to do this. If the guys line up on the hash, you got to do this. So they, they see it quicker, and now our younger guys are learning that too um, without having to make the mistakes um, to see that. So um, I start getting nervous, basically nervous all week. Well, you're saying you're better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a better teacher than I've ever been, no doubt about it. <laughs> you have better pupils. Coach, obviously Shane Callahan hasn't had quite the college career maybe he was hoping for coming uh -huh. out of high school. What does it say about him wow. that he stayed ready and uh, it seemed like he played pretty well against Oh, Arizona. wow. Um, I told Shane in front of the whole team how proud I was of him. Um, you know, he is a phenomenal young man, um, you know, and it was, a, you know, I think maybe the most highly recruited guy in the state his year coming out, definitely lineman-wise, one of the top one or two. Um, chose to go to Auburn. Um, after we were here, he called me, got a release and called and wanted to come back. We'd love to have him back. And, you know, he's played on and off through his career here and um, hadn't played a lot early, had helped us tremendously on our special teams um, and, uh, and then was able to start the other day and, and played really well. And, um, you know, he never said boo. He just worked hard. He had a great team attitude. And, um, you know, he, he's an example. That's what you have to have for, your, for you to have a chance to win championships. People get hurt. Things happen. People have to step in, star in the role. And when they star in the role, then everybody's dreams have come true. And that's what he did. And a lot of our players are doing that. That's how, you, that's how you're a good team. It's not just your first 11 and all the guys. It's 
the depth you have, and they come in and they're ready, they're prepared, they have a positive attitude, they've been after it and competing. If he would have been sulking for the last t eight weeks, he wouldn't have played well, would have hurt us. Um, and he didn't. Um, you know, he has unbelievable parents. He's an unbelievable young man, and uh, I can't tell you how proud I am of him. This may be an unfair question, and not to take anything away from your You're give me previous a, so can I say no right now? I don't want to answer <laughs> unfair question. Have you, is this the most fun you've had coaching football? Oh, wow. Um, it's all relative. Um, uh, you know, I've, I had fun coaching football at Davidson College my first year. And I'll, I'll, I'll never forget when we upset Charleston Southern. You know, I said, well, we were Division three non-scholarship, basically playing a scholarship team and beat them. I, I'll never forget that locker room with those young men when I was a defensive coordinator. Um, I'll never forget coaching um, at the Dallas Cowboys, and we beat the New York Giants on Monday night football on, in overtime on a you know, last second you know, field goal. You know, so, and then I can just go time after time. Um, but it, these young men have um, been phenomenal. And uh, yes, I've enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, and we've got a lot left to do. Um, you know, the most fulfilling thing you get as a coach my, my thought on it is, yeah, the wins are exciting, all that, but it's just to see those guys' eyes and see their faces and see them enjoying it and see them accomplish things that nobody thought they could accomplish. And uh, when you get, not many times you get a chance in life to do something that nobody thinks you can do, and you might have even doubted it. And then you overcome doubt and you overcome fear. Woo! You can't teach a better life lesson than that because they're going to face a lot of hard things in life that they're going to have to look it in the face and overcome it. So, you know, I, when I look at that, I see those type of things happen, and that, that excites my heart. It really does. Coach, is there a big college game in your past that you can recall two ranked teams as much at stake as this one that, you know, you can maybe refer to? Hmm. Uh, wow, it's a good, good question. Um, I don't know if I uh, have if, if one that kind of comes down to th these two teams. I don't think there's been one quite like this that I've been involved with where you have two teams that nobody thought would be here um, and that both believe they can be, be here and the excitement of it um, and uh, having a chance to both control their own destinies on their each side of the conference. You know, we could all meet again, too, in, uh, in, in three weeks. Um, so that, that's kind of interesting in the thought process also. Um, so uh, um, it, it's exciting. I, you know, it's a, um, it's a great opportunity, and we're excited about it. And I think it's, it's, you know, it's a pretty neat situation, I would say. I knew we couldn't get out without Brian asking a question. <laughs> I'm going to give you an easy one. Okay. But before the season, you and I were talking. You said there was one uniform combination this season you were really excited about. Have you guys had that uniform combination yet? Uh, no. Is it coming up this week? <laughs> <laughs> he said it wasn't going to be a hard one. Just wait and see. All right. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thank you.